Welcome back into hour number two of the early line on Wednesday morning, September 14th, 2022. Joe Ranieri, Donnie right side here. We're going to switch it over to back, or should I say back to the diamond because we got some awards and some races to figure out. Now, before we hit the NL Cy Young market and the AL Cy Young market, I want to talk a little MVP very quickly here because it looks like these are wrapped up here. Aaron Judge at the FanDuel Sportsbook, a minus 1450 to win the MVP in the American League over Shoei Otani, who's a 7-1. to Paul Goldschmidt, minus 2200 to win the NL MVP over Nolan Arenado, sitting at a 35-1. to My question to you here in this market, Joe, is I understand that Aaron Judge is the betting favorite by, by a large margin. Smart people know, but at the same time, Are we correct on this? Can we get a surprise on the voters going with Shohei Otani? And is there any value on Shohei at that 7-1 to price? Uh, Probably not. I mean, most of the, although it doesn't help when CC Sabathia is uh, is basically throwing Judge under the bus saying that it should be Otani uh, (laughs) that is the MVP. And I happen to agree with him here. I mean, unless Judge... Yeah. Uh, is striking out 200 dudes uh, and is the best pitcher on the Yankees as well. Um, yeah, there is one truly uh, MVP that cannot be replaced. Why? <laughs> he takes two roster spots. Uh, he's a pitcher. Yeah. He's a dominating pitcher, and he's uh, and he's a pretty darn good hitter too. So I get it. I don't know, given the fact that I do believe uh, the writers who vote for these awards, the, they got a lot of New York contingency there. So I think uh, Judge is safe, but I get the argument with Otani. I have said it. I had this argument with the Jordan years, the Kobe years, the LeBron mm-hmm. years. These guys are truly the MVPs. I, there's great players, don't get me wrong, but they're MVPs. Uh, I don't care who you vote in with this popularity contest. Nobody is more valuable to a team than Otani. It's a great point that you do bring up because we saw him get the award last year, and everybody always wants the next thing here instead of saying, yeah, we know he's good. What does Otani have to do? Well, he's got to hit 60 home right. runs and be the Cy Young Award winner. Then we'll give him the MVP this year. Yeah, so we've he's seen got, it before. Talking about the Cy Young. He's got so much competition. Exactly. Like, co- exactly. I mean, he, what he's doing is absolutely insane at this point here. Yep. Cy Young, National League and the American League. Interesting market here. Le- yesterday, during the Phillies game where Alcantara was on the mound, he was a minus 170 live for Cy Young. Wake up today, he's a minus 230. The American League Cy Young, very interesting. Verlander's been hurt and hasn't pitched in a few weeks here. Dylan Cease has seized the opportunity here. He's now a minus 140. I'm more focused on that AL Cy Young. Is Cease going to win this thing for the Chicago White Sox, even if they don't make it to the playoffs? Because quite frankly, Alcantara and the Marlins, they're not getting there either. Yeah, I, you know, listen, I thought it was pretty interesting that nobody's paying any uh, any attention to what Framber Valdez has done also. What is that, like yeah, 25 exactly. straight quality Historic. starts? Like, yeah, yeah, like, my goodness. Uh, but, no, I, I always thought that uh, that Verlander had already done enough uh, to warrant the award, whether he pitched again until the postseason or not. And it looks like uh, we may or may not get another start out of him. Uh, Dylan Cease, though, I, you know, there's nothing you could say. He he had this stretch where it wasn't great, Donnie, uh, but he's mm-hmm. pitching right now, top of mind, you know, uh, awareness. Verlander, we haven't talked about him in a while. Cease is getting a lot of publicity. It is a bit of a popularity contest after all, so – uh, would it shock me if he gets it? No, but I, I would. My vote would go to Verlander. Yeah, and by the way, Cease pitching tonight, which we'll break down a little bit later in the show. Let's welcome yep. in the radio audience here. A Wednesday morning on the early line right here on the Sports Grid Network. And how about this? Series XM Channel 159. Thank you for tuning in as well. We'll keep it moving here with a couple quick updates here throughout Major League Baseball. The division races here, right? New York Yankees, 15 to 1. It's a heavy price to pay. The Toronto Blue Jays at a 17 to 1 price to win the AL East. But I'm more focused here. There's two races. The Guardians now sit at a minus 340 price over the White Sox, who are plus 370. And the Twins now sitting back at a 15 to 1. Also, the NL East, Joe Ranier, which is within a half of the game. The Mets have a minus 210 lead, not because you only have a half of the game, but you're trying to look forward and say, boy, that Mets schedule is really easy. That's where the advantage is coming from. But if I ask you today, Guardians, Mets, Braves, White Sox, what's your thought process here? Maybe one of those teams that are dogs taking over the lead here in their respective divisions. So the Mets, it's going to come down to, I think there's what, uh, the last week in September, first week in October, we've got a series against Atlanta. 
Uh, and mm -hmm. that's how it's going to end, and that's probably where it's going to be decided when it's all said and done, uh, Donnie. So I do think the Mets have an opportunity to uh, to finish strong and put their stamp on it there in that final series uh, that's going to come up. But uh, the Guardians... Do we trust them? Do I I don't know who I trust in that division. I really, really don't. I mean, the White Sox, I keep wanting to stick a fork in them. They keep hanging mm -hmm. around. Uh, the Guardians don't hit consistently enough for me. I do love the bullpen. Uh, they've got some frontline starters there led by uh, Bieber and, and company. So uh, I would give the edge to the Guardians being able to have enough, especially because of that bullpen late in the season to be able to get it done. Yeah, it's, it's going to be one to watch coming down the stretch. It's always fun to see these teams, and also when the pressure really ratchets up, who's actually going to come through. One of those teams where the pressure has gotten to them, you could say, is the Milwaukee Brewers. Even though they picked up a victory oh. yesterday over the Cardinals, they've really faded back. They have no chance to win the division, but taking a look at that two games back of the San Diego Padres to try to get into that final wild card spot, they sit here at the FanDuel Sportsbook at a plus 198 price. But it's time to turn the page here over to college football. How about this? Hot games and hot topics up next. Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. In the landscape of college sports, some things remain the same. College the football today. In Alabama in winning SEC championship. It's the island of misfit choice. Fantasy sports so, today. You have to understand that. $4 word. gap between them and Kansas City. Pro football now them today. When this happened to this franchise, they are comical. Now, I'm not making light of the injuries. This is a brutal rash of in injuries. Game, live, but you take all the points, access. you can take the money line. And the sports book, if you shop around, you can get it at 133. But um, that's my best bet on the night, Joe. So that's the one I'm going big. In game go. live, prime time. I'm going a bit nostalgic. I'm going with an international, Jason Day and Sergio Garcia. But boy, you want to give me eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination? Get the winning edge only on Sports Grid, your 24/7 sports wagering network. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or TuneIn, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. The morning after. For Bo Bichette to record his 22nd ribby of this month is plus 155 on the FanDuel Sportsbook. I like that sprinkle for Bo Bichette in this game against the Rays. I also like to sprinkle on Asia Wilson. Las Vegas, a four and a half point favorite. But we look at Asia Wilson's rebounding prop of 10 and a half, a number she has gone over in six of seven playoff games, including 11 in game number one of the finals. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. Uh, Gerald Everett, uh, probably, you know, not drafted in some leagues. And again, with no Keenan Allen, he will suit up this week against Kansas City for the Chargers. Robert Tunyon on Green Bay. None of their receivers look good. Hayden Hurst maybe gets an extra look. This is how bad the tight end position is. Um, only 12 guys scored in the double digits. It is just a, a desperately brutal position. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. I think Penn State will go to Auburn and win. Auburn looks terrible. I think Oregon can get their reputation back if they beat BYU at Alton. That is like the Broncos going into that uh, Seattle game last night with that crowd. You play at Alton, you're going to have a long day. I don't care who you are. And then Oklahoma should roll Nebraska, but it's a, a rivalry game. Be very careful with that number. The Sports Grid Network.
time to talk some college football here on the early line. Show Ranieri and Donnie Wright side here on the Sports Grid Network. Let's get into it. Exciting week three coming up in college football. Do we have the true one versus two, five versus six? No, we don't. We actually were expecting a much better profile game from Texas A&M and Miami, which we'll get to in just a few moments. But the number one team, Joe, in the land, freshly crowned for week three are those Georgia Bulldogs as they head to take on South Carolina in an SEC tilt. Now, for me, I should be able to roll the helmets out there for the Georgia Bulldogs and come up aces in this one, but it is a road game. You're going to get South Carolina's best punch. You're favored by over three touchdowns. Is this one of those scenarios that you look at Georgia and say, a little fat and happy on top of the hill, won the championship last year, now number one again. We should be able to just go out here, win, and put on a show. Or could they possibly be on upset alert with Spencer Rattler, who has that high ceiling, but has yet to jump and touch that ceiling yet, Joe Ranieri? Yeah, I mean, he's not even the best quarterback that's going to be there. It's going to be Stetson Bennett, uh, who you be- you know, I mean, listen, it was a – it was a nice transfer. It was a it was a nice score for South Carolina, but he's not even in this team is not even remotely in the same uh, in the same realm of reality that Georgia is right now. And Stetson Bennett has done. We have to stop ignoring this kid, pretending like he's a game manager. That's kind of what it feels like, right? Like yeah. like he in the NFL, like he's this quarterback where just don't he's Jimmy G, right? Like don't get in the way, mm-hmm. just don't lose the. Yeah, no, like this, he is alone going to win Georgia games here, much like he did in that very first one against uh, Oregon here. I, I, what else do you want the kid to do here? 334 yards a game here. He lit up Bo Nix and company and that Oregon defense that was supposed to be one of the best out West. I, listen, I, I think they begin SEC play. Kirby Smart is reloaded. We've already seen the level of talent after sending 15 guys to the draft uh, last year in the NFL. Uh, I don't think there's anything slowing down uh, Georgia. You have to keep in mind, like we talk about Saban in Alabama, Georgia is now in that category. Um, and there's no way around it. Georgia and Al- It's Georgia, it's Alabama, and that's it, guys. Uh, the rest are trying to get to that level. But, yeah, no, Georgia is there, and South Carolina, Spencer Rath, there ain't nobody going to stand in their way, especially now that they've tasted a national championship with still a ton of guys on that team from last year. So, uh, yeah, it's looking good for Georgia, not looking good for South Carolina. Yeah, Stetson Bennett last week, too. Just one of those get-in, get-out games where you smoke Sanford and you're you know not in there that long. 300 yards passing in that game. So he is putting up those Heisman statistics that you would like from a number one yep. team. Also taking a look at this game here. You know, last week you had a high-scoring game between Arkansas and South Carolina. So immediately you look over and say, okay, 52-and-a-half, that should be going mm-hmm. to the over. You brought up a great point, too. The amount of talent just on the defensive side that Georgia lost, you figure there would be a letdown. I don't know, three against a top-11 Oregon team when you played them zero last week so Spencer Rattler if you're gonna have any hopes here you better move the football do you have any thoughts on that 52 and a half or is this one of those games where like we know Georgia will probably score but my goodness can South Carolina at least get a touchdown against this Bulldog team that hasn't given up one yet over the first two games yeah and they they're gonna pride themselves and and that here lies the problems with totals in georgia right there's Mm -hmm. i had the under in the oregon game donnie and i thought it was done by the half not because (laughs) oregon scored or participated in that it was because georgia ran them over and scored all the points themselves there are going to be i think a ton of games with georgia this year just like that so my look would be whatever that south carolina team total is go under uh, because getting in the red zone is one thing. Scoring a touchdown against this defense, like last year, is a different animal. Don't see it happening outside of maybe a special teams blunder or some sort of defensive touchdown from uh, South Carolina. Uh, those team totals under against anybody Georgia plays from here on out. Maybe the national spotlight here, which we expected to be on Oklahoma and Nebraska, probably expected Nebraska to be 3-0 and heading into this game. They're 1-2, and and they fired their head football coach, Scott Frost. So I guess Mark Whipple is going to 
take over the offense without having anybody telling him what to do. But it's an interesting scenario because you have a fired coach and underperforming team, but also in the betting market, Joe, FanDuel Sportsbook, we saw this game open up at a minus 13 and a half as a favorite mm-hmm. here towards Oklahoma. We're now down to 10 and a half. Do you believe that? Because for me, I love to look at this stuff and a buy low chance on a team. If you got the 13 and a half, great. Still sits around 10 and a half. Do you agree with that market movement here in the game between Oklahoma and Nebraska? Oh, yikes, yikes, yeah. I mean, listen, I, I get it. Um, we have done this. Uh, we have done this before, right? And, and usually yeah. pro sports, though, Donnie, where a coach gets fired and we're, it's usually mm-hmm. a bet on team from that point because one of two, that either the locker room is pure jubilation and they're like, thank God the witch yeah. is dead. Like, let us go out and play. And, and you know, they, they go on a streak. Or they're so mad at the firing that they, you know, they come together and they feel guilty that it's their reason. Uh, And I think there might be some of this with Nebraska here this week. Listen, if this was a Lincoln Riley OU, we'd be having a different conversation here. But Brent Venerables, um, good defensive, great defensive coordinator, but I don't know, are they... Are they capable of going? Because I still like the pieces they have in Nebraska. They just, for whatever reason, can't seem to win these close games here. But uh, I think uh, maybe, just maybe, they may not win it. But then again, I don't need them to win it, do I? I need them to cover it. Uh, So that's uh, kind of where I think uh, we're looking at with this game here. Yeah, we'll see where that one winds up. Don't feel bad, by the way, for Scott Frost. He got a big bag to go home Mm -hmm. and play golf for the rest of the year. Now, talking about a big bag and a buy out there, Marcus Freeman. Notre Dame's not going to fire their head coach after one year unless things really go off the rails. And my question to you, Joe Ranieri, if we look at Notre Dame, how much trouble are they in for this 2022 season? 0-2 to start, 10 points scored against Ohio State. We actually got positive reviews, Joe, after week one for Notre Dame. But, boy, did that end at a loss with Marshall at home. Now you take on the Cal Bears at home in South Bend. How much trouble are we looking at here? Um, they're in a lot of trouble. New quarterback now. You're uh, the quarterback that started the year here, which, uh, listen, we all thought played a great game against Ohio State, right? On the road in the shoe for his first start, Donnie. And we thought, you know, things mm-hmm. were going uh, pretty well for Buckner there and that, you know, it was it was a letdown against Marshall. But now they got to bring in the kid from uh, that was in relief last year. So they've now gone from a running team, which is how they built this, right, to now it's going to be absolute passing. They're going to be a pass-happy team. The defense is obviously going to keep them in games they probably shouldn't be in. Uh, But this is a big ask of this Notre Dame team coming in here, Donnie, isn't it? Uh, Especially with a new quarterback. And it's going to have to be a new philosophy because this kid is not going to run. He's not going to have the threat of the run. He's going to drop back and pass. We saw him in the Wisconsin game, I believe, last year uh, when he had to come in to, in relief. It's uh, There's a lot happening with this Notre Dame squad. Very prideful group, talent on defense. But my goodness, Donnie, how are they going to score? I mean, come on. And throw it to Mayer every single play. Now, we only have about That's a minute it. left in this segment. Yeah, we only have a minute left here. BYU Cougars, Joe, to the yes. college football playoff. Win over Baylor, top 10 team. Now we see the BYU Cougars moving closer to the top 10. They got a game matchup here in a, if they get by Oregon this week. That's the key on the road. They play Notre Dame on the road. No longer seems like a you know, big time you know, atmosphere here. And then they take on Arkansas at home, who's number 10 currently yep. here. Can they make it, Joe? Can BYU sneak in and crash that party? Why is Oregon still in the top 25? Mind-blowing. We have this conversation every year with BYU. Uh, And then they, like last year, then they had Baylor on the list. They go there, they lose, and then we stop talking about them over here. I always uh, side with a team that's got 30-year-olds on it. I do think BYU has Uh. an absolute opportunity experience-wise to run over this Oregon team. It's going to be a tough atmosphere, but when you're 30, you're kind of used to that already. Give me BYU. Always take the married men out there is what Joe and Erie's telling you. FanDuel Sports up next. <laughs> Sports Grid. 
your 24-7 sports wagering network. In the landscape of college sports, some things remain the same. College that football the today. Alabama in winning SEC champion. It's the island of misfit tour. Fantasy sports so today. You have to understand that. $4 word. gap between them and Kansas City. Pro football now them today. Two years when this happened to this franchise, they are comical. Now, I'm not making light of the injuries. This is a brutal rash of in injuries. Game line, but you can take all the access. You can take the money line. And a sports book. If you shop around, you can get it at 133. But um, that's my best bet on the night, Joe. So that's the one I'm going big. In game go. live, prime time. I'm a bit nostalgic. I'm going with an international, Jason Zane, Sergio Garcia. But boy, you want to give me eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination? Get the winning edge only on Sports Grid, your 24/7 sports wagering network. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. The morning after. For Bo Bichette to record his 22nd ribby of this month is plus 155 on the FanDuel Sportsbook. I like that sprinkle for Bo Bichette in this game against the Rays. I also like to sprinkle on Asia Wilson. Las Vegas, a four and a half point favorite, but we look at Asia Wilson's rebounding prop of 10 and a half, a number she has gone over in six of seven playoff games, including 11 in game number one of the finals. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. Uh, Gerald Everett, uh, probably, you know, not drafted in some leagues. And again, with no Keenan Allen, he will suit up this week against Kansas City for the Chargers. Robert Tunyon on Green Bay. None of their receivers look good. Hayden Hurst maybe gets an extra look. This is how bad the tight end position is. Um, only 12 guys scored in the double digits. It is just a, a desperately brutal position. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. I think Penn State will go to Auburn and win. Auburn looks terrible. I think Oregon can get their reputation back if they beat BYU at Alton. That is like the Broncos going into that uh, Seattle game last night with that crowd. You play at Alton, you're going to have a long day. I don't care who you are. And then Oklahoma should roll Nebraska, but it's a, a rivalry game. Be very careful with that number. The Sports Grid Network. Having some fun here on a Wednesday as we prepare for the NFL weekend, which starts tomorrow night with a fantastic game between the Kansas City Chiefs and the Los Angeles Chargers. And by the way, Joe, it took me a few years here, and I'm finally getting it right where I don't have to stumble over saying the San Diego Chargers and the Los Angeles mm -hmm. Chargers. So that's a pretty good start for us. But let's have some fun in the FanDuel market here. Week 2 sure. NFL specials are up. There's 15 of those. We'll go through. We'll have some fun. We'll see if they make some sense. And also... These are going to increase, starting at a plus 150 price, all the way up to as high as 8 to 1. If we're starting tomorrow night, you know we're always talking about the quarterbacks, Joe Neary. Yeah, but how about this one? Either Patrick Mahomes or Justin Herbert throws four or more touchdown passes. Not combined. If you have one side, Patrick Mahomes throws five. Obviously, a cash it in. But three and three for six combined, that doesn't get it done. Do you believe that either Mahomes or Herbert can throw for four or more touchdowns tomorrow to cash in a plus 150 price? I think Herbert's got the better shot at doing it uh, because I mm -hmm. do think that uh, they are going to be a hard press, Kansas City, uh, to drop Mahomes back as, as much uh, as possible against this defensive front. This ain't the Raiders. And while he had a ton of, uh, I mean, uh, while uh, while Kansas City's defense, of course, is not the Raiders and what we saw there, uh, which did a pretty good job of limiting uh, the Chargers when you think about how explosive they could be, I do think the Chiefs got to run the ball to have more success here. And they can't just be dropping back and letting 
those uh, those crazies there with Bosa and Khalil Mack, uh, you know, feast. So I do think it this might be a little bit lower scoring, so I'm a little worried. But I think of the two, I, I absolutely think Herbert's the guy that's got a better shot at doing it. I'm not convinced, though, that Mahomes, uh, I'm not sure Kansas City wins this game if he's got to throw four more touchdowns. Yeah, throwing four touchdowns in a game, it's no easy feat, even though we saw Mahomes mm-hmm. go last week for a five and probably could add seven if Arizona could return any sort of fire in that game. If we're taking a look at running back, Saquon Barkley was sensational opening day. So this one also catches our eye mm-hmm. at a plus 150 price. Either Saquon Barkley or Christian McCaffrey, keep in mind they play each other this week, to have 150-plus scrimmage yards. So that includes rushing and receiving. Are we believing in either one of these running backs? Because, quite frankly, they're going to be the mainstay in this game. It's going to be a lot of touches between these two. What if I gave you a plus 350, um, neither makes it through the game without getting hurt? Oh, uh, would see, you that's what, a good Would one. you take that yeah. also? Because, odds yeah, boost. that's my problem. Make it an odds boost. That's, yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, you've got uh, two glass Joes here right now that when the wind blows, mm-hmm. they get hurt. Uh, and then we end up losing them for long stretches here. Uh, it should be the easiest cash ticket of the weekend here. The fact that but the only offense is going to come from Barkley. We know that. And Christian McCaffrey, you know, the, the as he goes, this Carolina team will go. So both should be able to catch the ball out of the backfield and have enough success running the ball to cash this ticket. The biggest problem is will either of them be on the field in the fourth quarter? You got it. And also, we're going to skip down a couple of these because obviously if we took all, it would take the entire two hours of the early line. But some fun ones also here. The Dallas mm. Cowboys game is interesting. These two wide receivers are lining up here. Jamar Chase and C.D. Lamb to combine for 200 or more receiving yards at a plus 150 price. These ones are fun. Why? Because if Jamar Chase goes for 200 yards, it doesn't matter what CeeDee Lamb actually did in this game. One guy has a buck 50, the other guy has 50. You still cash this ticket. Are we believing here that Cooper Rush can provide some ammunition for CeeDee Lamb? Because the one thing that we do know, Jamar Chase is a pretty good player, and also their quarterback, Joe Burrow, he can get it to him. 200 yards, Joe. Are we believing here? Yeah, it's got to be all Jamar Chase. Uh, But boy, oh boy, Lamb didn't look great in that first one when his quarterback was playing there. Uh, Did not look great against that Tampa D. But again, Cincinnati's D is not Tampa's D. So I do think this one has a shot at actually cash in there, uh, Donnie. If I can get at least 70, 80 yards out of C.D. Lamb, I think we're good to go. Yeah. You need that big play. You need that Jamar Chase, one catch, 75 yards in the first quarter, and away you go in that game. Now, let's take a look at this one. One of the true stories in professional football over the past, I don't know, 15 years or however Aaron Rodgers has been in the league, he dominates the Chicago Bears. This is a good one here at the FanDuel Sportsbook for this Week 2 special. Does he still own them is the question mark here. Aaron Rodgers to throw three or more touchdown passes against the Bears at a plus 175 price. We don't have Devontae Adams. We know these wide receivers are going to struggle in 2022, at least for the beginning of the season. Do you believe against this Bears defense at home in Lambeau, Aaron Rodgers cannot three touchdown passes? If it ain't broke, don't <laughs> fix it. Uh, and, yeah, no, it ain't uh, It ain't necessarily broke. Keep in uh, mind that he didn't have, uh, you know, Lazard, I think, in that game. He didn't have uh, his uh, his best offensive lineman in that game mm-hmm. also there on uh, against Minnesota. So, and we've seen this movie before with Aaron Rodgers. There is no better way to get back on track during the season, Donnie, than what? Green Bay playing the Chicago yeah. uh, Bears. Yeah. And le- is there a monsoon scheduled? Oh, no? Okay, good. Yeah, no. Uh, Aaron Rodgers will absolutely go out of his way uh, to build some rapport with some of those new guys. And I bet you they don't drop touchdown passes like they did uh, against Minnesota, Dotson. Yeah, the only Watson, question mark rather. I have is do the yeah do the Chicago Bears actually excuse me the Packers actually need to score three touchdowns to beat the Chicago Bears this weekend? But that's a pretty nice price to have at this point. Oh, Here's yeah. one of my favorite ones that I circled here: a three to one price, and it has to deal with Ooh. this Cleveland Browns. Miles Garrett to record a sack 
and Nick Chubb to have a hundred or more rushing yards at a three to one price. If you had this very same bet week one against Carolina, you cruise to a three to one victory here going up against the Jets. I expect the Browns to beat the Jets, which means they don't have to do all that much with the Joe Flacco led offense. So you can sort of run that football and run the clock. And also Miles Garrett getting after his statue. I like this one at three to one here, Joe. Listen, the Flacco dropped back 59 times. 59. Uh, and that, uh, 15, yeah. that is not a recipe for success. Even if it was 2005, that's not a recipe for success with Joe Flacco and the Jets. 22 pressures they gave up to the Ravens there. Uh, and again, they're a mess on the offensive line. But they also, keep in mind, shot themselves in the foot a ton. That being the Jets, they had... A ridiculous at what 81 yards in penalties uh they've had uh they had just uh, fumbles uh a wide open pass for a touchdown by my the the jets were in that game more than the final score tells them but they did a great job of shooting themselves in the foot if they clean it up uh, to me cleveland is one dimensional so are you going to run the ball on that front of the jets that front seven of the jets at some point, Jacoby Brissett has got to beat you. Can he beat them? I worry about the rushing because they're going to sell out uh, to stop everybody on the rush, and that means Jacoby Brissett. I don't have a problem with Miles Garrett getting to Flacco, but I have a problem thinking that they're somehow just going to run all over this Jets uh, front seven here. I worry about it because they're going to make Brissett beat them, not Nick Chubb. Now, how much of the point spread do we give for Brownie the Elf being the midfield, you know, marker there? Is that solid points, point. three points? What is that? That's a solid, solid point. Okay. point. I didn't realize that. Well, if they're on their side of Brownie the Elf, uh, uh, I think they're going to be okay. I, I think they can probably hit this. But uh, Brownie the Elf going to play a big role here, uh, mostly because the Jet defenders are probably going to be laughing uh, as they're standing on top of Brownie the Elf. You know that, and I know that, Donnie. I mean, trust me, if the Jets go in there and beat the Cleveland Browns with Brownie the Elf at midfield, we will never hear the end of the Brownie the Elf game in Cleveland lore here. Let's take a look at one more of these fan weekly specials before we hit some of the higher scoring markets. Monday night football, two wide receivers that really got down the business on opening weekend. Justin Jefferson and A.J. Brown to have 100 plus receiving yards each so in this game so aj brown has to go over 100 and also justin jefferson if that happens that's a five to one ticket in your back pocket it it might happen by the half donnie uh i mean let's be realistic here you You guys know yeah Yeah. i know will they get uh give us more money there fan dolphin on um listen justin jefferson uh and hackett uh or uh rather um uh the new coach there from minnesota who did this with cooper cup uh, he did it also with Devontae Adams when he was with, uh, you know, Green Bay. They have this way of getting guys like Jefferson in space. They build the offense around him. So I think Jefferson has got no problem uh, doing his part in that. And let's face it, how many did A.J. Brown have last week there, Donnie? You're in Philly. Um, he is going to Tons. have a monster season this year for uh, for Philadelphia. And I think it starts... Uh, Monday night uh, with a uh, with another big effort by him at home. Now, if we're talking about only Monday night games, you have a, pr- a great doubleheader to watch. But Sunday, the Sunday only market, the highest scoring game. If we take a look across the board, Cardinals and the Raiders plus five hundred, Commanders and the Lions plus six fifty, Falcons and the Rams plus eight hundred, and onward as we move on. I think we're on the same page here. Your highest scoring game on Sunday. Where's that value for you, Joe Ranieri? Oh, it's Washington and uh, and the Lions, my uh, my friend. Mm. I am not a believer in the Cardinals' offense, uh, but I uh, I do think uh, the uh, the Raiders' defense will do a pretty good job against them. Uh, too many injuries there from my taste. So I think the Commanders and the Lions are going to have a lot of success running the ball. Dotson's going to have a big game throwing the ball. Give me uh, give me that at six to one, six fifty to yeah, plus six fifty. Plus 650, who would have thought that you'd have those two teams being the highest scoring? And I agree with Joe Ranieri here. Now, Major League Baseball is on deck. A huge card for today. We're going to preview that next. Come on back with us.
your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best slips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. Got this victory last year over Ball State, 44 to 13. The potential look ahead against Auburn, I don't think it happens. They are 33 and seven straight up. Date 40 yard line six times. Yep. Now that amounting to three points is unforgivable, but they did move the ball. Yeah, I know it's dangerous to say this, but I'm still going to say it. Oh. It can't be that bad again. Oh. It just can't. College football today, only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. Now, naturally, there were a few injuries at the running back position that have changed the landscape a little bit about what we're talking about here. Jeff Wilson Jr. will get the start for San Francisco, obviously, because they have no one else. Jamal Williams was the red zone guy for Detroit. He could be on the waiver wire in some leagues. You'll have to tell us who Jalen Warren is on Pittsburgh in case Najee Harris can't go this week. And actually, if Brian Robinson did not get drafted. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. Tyreek Kill, A.J. Brown, and Devontae Adams. All impressive. Tyreek, the only one that did not go over 100 yards, only finished with 94. Devontae Adams did find the end zone. The setup here between these three wide receivers is to be super important to their football teams, and that was on display in week number one. Only on Sports Grid. Pharrell, coast to coast. You're right. The two fumbles at the goal line, absolutely that's the reason. The main reason probably they lost this game. I thought the coach was embarrassing kicking that field goal. He had the ball with 50 seconds left. It's fourth and five, and you just gave this guy $200-plus million and traded for him, and yeah. he can't get you five yards to get you a little bit closer and keep the drive moving? Absolutely ridiculous. The Sports Grid Network. All right, we are going to talk some Major League Baseball, but not quite yet as we clean up this FanDuel market, which we're having so much fun talking about here. Just went over the highest scoring game, and Joe and I are in agreements here, the Commanders and the Lions. But as always, if you have, Joe, a highest scoring game, you know what the other betting market is? The mm -hmm. lowest scoring game of the week. If we list the favorites here at the FanDuel Sportsbook, the Steelers and the Patriots, plus 650. The Jets and Browns plus 650. The Bears and the Packers 8 to 1. Panthers, Giants 8 to 1. And the Seahawks and the Niners plus 850. Is any one of these games piquing your interest where you think it will be the lowest scoring game of the week? Yeah, it's um boy, there are some uh there are some beauties on here, aren't there? I um I think though. If I'm going to look at this, I, I worry about the Patriots, Steelers, uh, Jets, and Browns are the obvious one, but I'm thinking Seahawks 49ers might have just a tinge mm. of uh, of under and disgustingness uh, all over it as we saw the Seahawks play two quarters of football. Uh, and then uh, I don't know if they ever came out of the locker room there, Donnie, offensively there. Everyone, Geno Smith for MVP mm. until they saw him in the third and fourth quarter and he was on the <laughs> sideline. Um, so uh, Trey Lance, uh, that experiment, uh, uh, but I do think uh, maybe defensively, uh, 
I'm going to take a stab here, plus 850 on the Seahawks and 49ers being the lowest scoring game here. I like where you're going with that, too, because when I set up this card early this morning, the Panthers and the Giants were even with the 49ers and the Seahawks at plus 850. That's the way I went. I just see more of a ground and pound in that game. We'll see who wins that one. But also, same type of market here for us. Highest scoring team, Joe Ranieri, and lowest scoring team here of the week. If we're looking at the highest scoring team, keep in mind, no Monday night football, no Thursday night football, mm-hmm. just the Sunday slate here. The Rams are the favorite at plus 750. Raiders at 8-1. to one, Broncos at plus 950. 13-1 to one for the San Francisco 49ers. Here's why I love these markets, too. It's not as if, Joe, they're telling you, well, you get the Rams at a plus 170 price. You're getting legitimate, right. like, lotto-type tickets if you go down the list here. I love it. For me, I'm actually going with the Denver Broncos at plus 950 to get angry and revenge their opening day loss. They're not going to fumble a million times inside the one. I think they punch it up into the 30s. I'll take the Denver Broncos as my highest scoring team of the week. Who do you got here, Joe? You um not a bad way to go there, uh, Donnie. In fact, uh, I love where you go with that because I, I do tend to agree with you here. But um, I also think uh, we're going to see a, a much improved uh, Cincinnati Bengals uh, offense ah. as well. So I do think... Uh, there will be cut back on the five, uh, you know, turnovers there. Uh, get Chase more involved. Get Mixon more involved. I do think uh, the Bengals are poised to have quite uh, the offensive uh, game there this weekend. So at uh, what plus thirteen hundred? Yeah, I'll take a little stab here with the Bengals being that uh, that big scoring team this week. Maybe my favorite market of the week. And if you like a lot of pain, this Mm -hmm. is the market that you bet. That is the lowest scoring team of the week. Once again, Sunday only. Seattle Seahawks at a plus 850. The Bears at a plus 850. The Jets at a 10 to 1. The Cowboys at a 10 to 1. Again, you're not getting these bad football teams, Joe, like plus 275. Mm -hmm. You're getting big numbers. Where are you going in this market where you think one of these teams is really going to stink up the joint Sunday? Yeah, and um, I mean, call me crazy here, Donnie, but uh, something tells Uh me that we are not going to get the same type of offensive output from Marcus Mariota and the Atlanta Falcons. As uh, as we just saw, I mean, listen, it, it's he's kind of been the forgotten guy, right, Mariota? Uh, he's been in the background there since he was traded away from uh, Tennessee. Nobody's really known. Arthur Smith, I thought, game planned a nice offense uh, to highlight what Mariota does well. The problem is now the cat's out of the bag and defensive coordinators uh, now see what you're doing with Mariota. They also have tape on him to know uh, what else he doesn't do very well. And I think the, uh, oh, let's see, the Rams at home are going to be a little ticked off uh, with the outcome from the Bills. So I fully anticipate uh, points being very hard to come by for the Atlanta Falcons in this one. Yeah, so Aaron Donald crashing down the fort. Maybe not a lot of open running lanes for Cordaro Patterson to run for over 100 yards in this game. So we'll find that out. But for me, I'm going to take a game out here that may have the capabilities to match up against Iowa, Iowa State last week. And I'm going to take the Pittsburgh Steelers as my lowest scoring team at a 15 to 1 price here. And I will not be surprised if Bill Belichick and Mike Tomlin are at 7 to 3 by the time we have the end of the third quarter. So we'll see how that one plays out. But it's a fun market to bet into. And once again, there are lottery tickets if you want to go down. How about if you think the Colts won't be as good? I mean, the Colts had three points in the second half against the Texans, Joe. They're 42-1 yep. to one to be the lowest-scoring team of the week. So a lot of fun you can have in these FanDuel markets. But we do have Major League Baseball here on the horizon. Large card for a Thursday afternoon. A lot of afternoon games. And where I want to start this one is Colorado going up against the Chicago White Sox. 929, 930 on the rotation. The 
The reason I like this here is Freeland is a lefty on the mound. We'll get to that in just a few moments. We also talked about the AL, AL Cy Young market at a minus 140 price at the FanDuel Sportsbook, which Dylan Cease is the favorite to win that award. He's a heavy favorite today at a minus 250 price. The total is listed at 7.5. If I'm betting this game, the way I want to approach it is two ways here. If we're looking at the Chicago White Sox, what's the one thing they do really well, or at least over the past mm-hmm. few years, hit left-handed <clears throat> pitching? If we're looking at their mm-hmm. lineup today, Joe, over the past 30 days in Major League Baseball, going up against right-handed pitchers, take a look at these weighted on base percentages here. Elvis Andrews, a 573. Yoen Moncada, 584. Jose Abreu, 360. Jimenez, 470. Pollock, 510. Zavala, 535. Gonzalez, 484. It's off the charts. I love the Chicago White Sox on the run line today, and I love their team total. And maybe Dylan sees punching his ticket towards that AL Cy Young. Yeah, uh, it's amazing uh, that uh, what we've seen from this White Sox team as well, once uh, La Russa was not in the dugout anymore, uh, they were barely a 500 (laughs) team with him. Uh, now, without him, they're 10 and 4. Uh, shocking how that happens here. And listen, Colorado on the road? Yeah, no. No, Yikes. no, no, no. Uh, yeah, there can't be first five run line. Give me a lay to half a run. Uh, yeah, give me uh, give me every which way to back the White Sox to get it done. Team totals under for Colorado. Uh, you name it here. I think uh, they found a little something here. And with Cease on the mound? I think they're uh, they're ready to go here. They can't afford any more letdowns. And oh, by the way, Larusa won't be in the dugout. So there you go. Ah. There's a positive mm. right off the bat here. We'll see a minus yep. 140 price here for Cease. If he has a good performance, he probably will extend that lead over Justin Ver- or excuse me, over Verlander. But when we talk about Verlander too, yep. when is he coming back? We're not really sure. So maybe it's Cease's market to win against Justin Verlander. 903, 904 on the rotation, 345 Eastern first pitch here. Atlanta's mm. going to start Charlie Morton on the mound, going up against Carlos Rodon, the lefty here for the San Francisco Giants. If we're looking at the total numbers here, opened up at a minus. 120 price. We're seeing that rise a little bit higher here at the FanDuel Sportsbook currently at a minus 124. The total in this game, Joe Neary, a seven and a half. And I got to tell you, I'm leaning towards the under today out there in San Francisco. What a battle this was back in uh, in June as both guys threw really good, but neither one of them uh, were in the decision due to the fact that the Braves uh, scored, I believe, three in the bottom of the nine to walk it off and win 4-3. Mm-hmm. Uh, totals is the way I would go here. I mean, my goodness. Rodon has been absolutely uh, amazing, and yet Charlie Morton has really gotten better in typical Charlie Morton uh, style, right, Donnie? He gets better as the season goes on. A lot of guys stuck a fork in him early this year. No, 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 no. Uh, he's been real good. Unbeaten in his last seven uh, three and oh with a 3.40 ERA. He hasn't lost since July 27 to your Philadelphia Phillies. Yeah, I mean, he's 38 years old, but he is crafty, and I'm going first five under. Uh, and I would even look team total under for the Giants, uh, because they can't score runs and they won't against uh, Charlie Morton again here today. Haves and the have-nots in Major League Baseball. The Braves trying to track down the Mets and get into the playoffs. And then you have the San Francisco Giants not really playing for too much here in the month of September. We'll keep moving forward here. Another afternoon baseball game. This one, playoff implications all the way around. San Diego Padres and the Seattle Mariners lineup mm-hmm. today. That's a 4-10 start. If we're looking at this game overall, Louis Castillo on the mound here going to go up against Mike Clevenger. And for me, the price is a little bit high. But again... Price and values in the eye of the beholder. A minus 162 price live here at the FanDuel Sportsbook. A total listed at 7.5. Louis Castillo, since coming over from the Cincinnati Reds, has been wonderful. Even over the past 30 days, Joe, a Mm 3.06 XFIP number. K percentage above 30%. Not walking a lot of batters. And his splits are very good. Dominating lefties to the tune of a 265. Weighted on base percentage. Righties at a 329. Right around average. But if we flip it over here and take a look at Clevenger on the mound for the Padres, a little bit of a different story over the past month a 6.4 xfip number lower strikeout rate and also 55 batters joe that he's faced from the right hand side at 371 weighted on base percentage in an iso of 250 you said i don't like to bet anything higher than a minus 150 but if i'm looking money lines here i think the mariners bounce back today against clevenger and pick up this w 
Yeah, uh, a very playoff atmosphere esque. I think mm-hmm. Melvin even said it uh, last yeah. night after the game, and that's kind of what I think you're feeling here. Uh, with both of these guys maybe pressing a little because neither has this tremendous, hey, you're in, don't worry about it. Uh, The Padres are clinging. Soto's not hitting. Um, There are some question marks there. So I do think we're going to get that similar feel here on an afternoon game after uh, they played well into the night last night in a masterful Darvish uh, performance, but I think we're going to get more of the same here, Donnie. I'm leading towards the under in this one here, thinking that, yeah, they uh, this is going to feel and look a lot like something we're going to see in a couple of weeks here in the postseason. Give me, uh, give me the under, seven and a half. There we go. Talking about postseason Major League Baseball, how about this one here? The New York Yankees headed to the postseason. The Boston Red Sox are going to be headed home for the postseason. But my question is not the game itself, which I do think the Yankees will win, Mm -hmm. but it's Aaron Judge, and he hits two home runs last night. Can he extend that? The question is, Bellow's going to be on the mound today, a right-handed pitcher, 3.83 XFIP. He's got unbelievably good splits over the past 30 days. If we're just lining up Aaron Judge versus Bellow, 46 batters that Bellow has faced, over the right-hand side over the past month, Joe, 264 weighted on base percentage, but a zero ISO power number. My question to you, mm-hmm. even knowing that, is Judge going yard tonight for number 58? Um, If they pitch to him, uh, that's going to be the big question here. How many times uh, are they going to give Judge an opportunity to beat them in this game? And by the way, Nestor, who was president last time he actually won a game here? It feels like uh, <laughs> it's been a long time time here Donnie that he's actually gotten a W uh it might happen here tonight but I'm expecting a lot of runs in this game the consummate professional Joe Ranieri rising up with us on the early line thank you for the previous two hours here and get some rest because it is football season no rest for the Uh, weary though we got to come back here with a little listen up racing the clock's running out it all comes down to this we're talking pre-game 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 get locked in with game time decisions your hosts gabe marinci and cam stewart will get you ready for game time everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the Pro Football Doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. Got this victory last year over Ball State, 44 to 13. The potential look ahead against Auburn, I don't think it happens. They are 33 and seven straight up. They 40 yard line six times. Yep. Now that amounting to three points is unforgivable, but they did move the ball. I know it's dangerous to say this, but I'm still going to say it. Oh. It can't be that bad again. It just can't. College football today, only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. Now, naturally, there were a few injuries at the running back position that have changed the landscape a little bit about what we're talking about here. Jeff Wilson Jr. will get the start for San Francisco, obviously, because they have no one else. Jamal Williams was the red zone guy for Detroit. He could be on the waiver wire in some leagues. You'll have to tell us who Jalen Warren is on Pittsburgh in case Najee Harris can't go this week. And actually, if Brian Robinson did not get drafted. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. Tyreek Hill, A.J. Brown, and Devontae Adams. All impressive. Tyreek, the only one that did not go over 100 yards, only finished with 94. Devontae Adams did find the end zone. The setup here between these three wide receivers is to be super important to their football teams, and that was on display 
in week number one only on sports grid pharrell coast to coast you're right the two fumbles at the goal line absolutely that's the reason the main reason probably they lost this game i thought the coach was embarrassing kicking that field goal he had the ball with 50 seconds left it's fourth and five and you just gave this guy 200 plus million dollars and traded for him and yeah. he can't get you five yards to get you a little bit closer and keep the drive moving absolutely ridiculous the sports grid network All right, last segment of the day right here for the early line. Sirius XM Channel 159 on the Sports Grid Network. Today, Joe Ranieri and me, Donnie Wrightside, brought that pain from 7 to 9 a.m. And a lot of interesting topics all the way across the board. Excited once again for NFL Week 2 here. But before, you know, you get your Sports Grid day going here. I get it. But Ben's going to come up next year. He'll handle his business on TMA. But I am so excited because Week 3 is when I really – Start to hit the gas pedal here. Team total sides, bets. We really get involved in it. But I want to caution you. Watch out. Betting approach for week two. Listen up. Now, if you are entering into the betting market here in week two, one of the most turbulent weeks in all of sports for handicappers, what did you see week one? Was it real? Is it going to follow through to week two? And also, are you using in your handicapping prowess Brownie the Elf being a two or three point advantage here for the Browns at home against the New York Jets? If you're doing that, you're probably doing it wrong. But again, what are we going to see from week one to week two? Keep in mind, football teams improve more from week one to week two, whether that's high school, college, or the professional ranks than any other week during the season. So if we're going to sit back and take a look at, is Miami for real? Are the Baltimore Ravens okay without a dominant running game, or at least J.K. Dobbins back in their life? Are we taking a look at that Monday night football game where you say to yourself, boy, the Philadelphia Eagles really are contenders. They handled their business against a pretty solid Minnesota Vikings team. Are there teams that are going to really look better than they did in week one? The New, the New England Patriots were horrendous when they took on the Miami Dolphins. Now they're going to go play the Pittsburgh Steelers. Is this a Bill Belichick special where they come out and actually put up points into the 20s here and easily handle their business? A lot can be decided. But after week two, you're going to have your finger on the pulse of what is what in the NFL, and I can't wait for it. But having said that, Week two on deck. You don't think DRS is betting some of these football games and some of these weekly specials on the FanDuel Sportsbook? You're crazy. Of course I am. But make sure you stay tuned to Ben Stevens and the morning after coming up now on The Grid.